Thank you for this word. Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity um, that you have given me to share your word with your people here this evening. Um, Lord, I ask that you go beyond my preparation, go beyond the things I wrote, I've written down, and Lord, bless your people. Let your, your word move, O oh God, from the church building to the homes of your people. And everyone that will listen to this on the internet, let it let there be an impact, O oh God. I pray for their heart, that you open their heart to receive this word that you have for them today. Lord, give me the, your, your manservant the grace and the ability to share your word exactly the way you want it. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to um, our midweek service. Can you just um, welcome someone to church? And just um, if you're at home, just uh, welcome someone and tell them it's time. It's time for the Word of God this, this, this lovely Thursday evening. And I hope the day was, your day was good. Yep, I'm bringing you a word today to cap it all up. Um, I'm just thank God for the opportunity to, to bring this word to you. All right, before I proceed, um, let me give honor to whom honor is due. Um, our senior pastor, the angel over this house, Pastor Larry, I just want to thank you, sir, um, for this opportunity to um, minister to God's people. I just want to thank you because without this opportunity, I will not be able to fulfill um, the call of God in my life, so I appreciate it. Um, very much, and also want to use this ex um, to use this uh, medium also to thank um, uh, to appreciate the other pastors that serve with um, with me and Pastor Larry in the house uh, for their excellent and tireless um, effort. Um, I want to appreciate you. Then also, Church, I need to appreciate you for for today. Okay, let me proceed. I have a of things. I have some work to do here this evening, but um, God willing, I believe that it will be an impactful um, service for all of us, wherever we are, whether we're in church or at we are home. All right. Um, this, this, um, just follow me. This, um, this evening, I will be dealing with what um, from three scriptures. Um, um, the Lord has led me three scriptures. Just bear with me. It is needful that we go through these um, scriptures so that uh, we can have an understanding of what I want to say here today. All right, so let's open to King, um, 2 Kings chapter 1, um, verse 16. 2 Kings chapter 1, verse 16. Um, it says, Then he said to him, Thus says the Lord, because you, because you have sent messengers to inquire of, of Belzebub, Bel, the God of Ekron, is it because there is no God in Israel to inquire of, the, of his word? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die." Okay, verse 17 says, So Ahaziah died according to the word um, of the Lord, which Eli Elijah had spoken because he had no son. Jehoram um, became king in his place in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Ju Judah. Okay, um, before I proceed, this, this was what happened between... Um, um, this was what happened with to King um, Ahaziah. He fell down, and um, he he fell down. I'm sure it must have been a serious injury, and he was he he wanted to know whether he would leave, and he had to send message. Um, he had to send message. Um, tell his people go and inquire from, from, from the agents um, of Beelzebub, the messengers of Bel Beelzebub, to inquire and to find out, am I going to survive this thing? You know, am I going to survive it? And as he was going, this is a king. 
Mind you, this is the king of um, this is the king of Israel. And as he was going, the Lord said to Elijah, "Tell him, send a message. Is there no God in Israel? Is there no God in Israel?" I am really that. That is the title of my message today. Is there no God? Uh, well, it won't be in Israel. Is there no God of the believers? Is there no God of the believers? Okay, let's read another, another scriptures, Deuteronomy um, 18, 10. Deuteronomy 18, um, I'll read from verse 10 to verse 13. It says, there shall, be, there shall not be found among you any who, sh- who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omen, or a a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are, for all who do these things are an abomination to God. And because of these abominations, the, the Lord your God drives them out um, from before. The, because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. Okay, so this is the second um, the scripture. And the third one, let's quickly go to Romans 10, um, 10 um, verse 14, and I'll begin to build it from there. Um, just bear with me with all the scriptures. It is needful um, for us to do that. Okay, um, Romans 10, 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Amen. All right. So these are the scriptures I want to use tonight to be able to portray that the Lord has laid in my heart. I think it was um, a couple of, well, maybe up to a year um, now that I was in my study, I was studying, and um, the Holy Spirit just dropped it in my spirit. This Second Kings verse 1, 16, it said, is there no God in Israel that my people are running from one place to the other? Is there no God in Israel? You know, because I, I just, I think sometime that week, that week, I had, I had a discussion with some certain pastors and it was a heated argument and they were asking, why is it that my church people, they don't stay? Why is it that my church people, we hear, we have prayer sessions, we, we pray in the morning, we pray in the evening, but still, my church people, they go, they go to, to meet to prayer houses. And he was not happy that they go to prayer houses. He was not happy that they pray to, um, go to prayer houses. And I was trying to tell them, I, are you aware? So I asked one of them and I said to him, and I said, um, so how do you pray? How do you come up with the prayers um, that you pray? And he, he was giving me as I'm led by the Spirit. And I was like, look, you are the pastor. How can you be led by the Spirit to, to know every need of, of, of the whole church? Why don't you ask them? You can, you can be led to pray for the ministry, um, to pray for the ministry. But for the people, for the people, they, you need to know what is happening in their lives. And so perhaps you need to ask them to find out what is happening in their lives so that you can pray for them instead of praying general prayers that are not heating. Perhaps in the church, there are women that are looking for fruit of the womb, and you're dealing with issues that have to do, um, say, with prosperity or things that is not connecting. So you are the father of the church. You need to connect with everybody. So we were talking, and we were sharing ideas on how we can pray the prayer that is needful for the people so that they will receive everything at home. 
they will get everything. So the summary of it all is that uh, for what are the things that we need to do as, a, as church leaders to make sure that our people stay and they are well fed spiritually um, in church um, to receive all the things that God has in store for them in, in church. Because if not, we find ourselves in a situation, we come back to the point of the Old Testament. We are, not, we are now coming back to the point of the Old Testament. And what does that mean? It means that in the Old Testament, if you remember, this was a king. He didn't have the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, the, the Holy Spirit was not shared among everybody in the Old Testament. So it comes on a selected, a selected few that are the prophets, a selected few that, that God wants to use at that time. So not everybody has the gift of the Spirit. So the king, the king now did not know if he was going to leave. So he had to send. And you know, he had to send to, to another prophet not even his prophet, but he sent to an agent of Beelzebub and said, will I die? And this angered God. And that's why he said, is there no God in Israel that you are going to a lesser God? You are going to a man to inquire. These are the things that are happening in our lives now. That each and every one of us, we are looking, we are going to places we ought not to go to. We are speaking to people we ought not to be speaking to. We have these things, but we don't know how to receive them. So we are going from one point to the other. This is, this is that confusion. There is a confusion because, because we have not been taught, but today you will hear it. We have not been taught, but today we will hear exactly what God's mind is about receiving and hearing from him. So it leads me to Deuteronomy 18 now. He says that look at what God says. Those that pass through their sons and daughters through fire, it is, it is an occultic setting, is witchcraft. It talks about witchcraft, soothsayers, interpreters of omen, sorcerers, conjurers, conjurers of spell, medium spirits, and we, most of them, these spirits, these diviners, they carry Bible. And they will give you prophecies and they will say things to us. And you, you see, it's always funny when, when you meet someone and that person tells you what happened to your grandfather, what happened to your grandmother, um, what happened to you five years ago. But they are not telling, yes, you can see my problem. But I know my problem. I am with my problem. What I want is the solution. And most of the time, they don't have the solution. They just tell you, I, and, and you know that the, the spirit is, they walk by the spirit, familiar spirit. They can tell you some certain things that will happen to you because there are some familiar spirits. The spirits that fought your father, the demons that fought your father are still going to come after you to see if you are strong enough or they are going to cage you also like they caged your father. But the Lord said, the people that practice these things, it's an abomination for me to go to spirits and diviners and to native doctors and to people that conjure up spells and sorcerers and witchcrafts and soothsayers. God said, is an abomination. God said, is an abomination. But try, I'm trying to bring it home now because now there's a confusion. I have read Romans 10, 14. Now there is a confusion. Hmm. Now there's a confusion. This was Old Testament. If you remember in 1 Samuel 30, verse 7, if I can have that, 1 Samuel 30, verse 7. This was how it was done in the old days. Can I have the scripture up, please? Um, this was how it was done in the old days. When David came to Ziglag, David as Ziglag, he lost everything. They were about to stone him. This was what he did. Because the spirit was not on everybody at that time. Because the Holy Spirit has not come. David said to Abit Ab Abiata, the priest, he says, bring the ephod here to me. 
And Abiata brought the ephod to God, um, to David. Go to the next slide. And what? So David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And the Lord answered, pursue you, shall surely overtake them without fail, and you will recover all. So he brought the ephod at that particular time. You see that the Lord were with the priest and through some particular priest, he's able to interpret, his, his men are able to, um, he's able to speak to men and tell them every inquiry. And he expected the, uh, the king of Israel brought up in, in, in the Hebrew ways to understand that there is an ephod, there is a priest. As there was a priest, um, a high priest in Israel, there was also a high priest in Judah. In Judah. So this was how it happened in the Old Testament. Now we are in a new dispensation of time. So we are stuck now with Romans 10.14. Can I have Romans 10, 14? Now, how, how then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how can they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So that's why I'm here today. That's why I'm here today. How will they hear yeah, go to the next slide. Let's just finish it. 15, um, the next. Um, and now, how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Go back to 14. So it is that second question there. How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How can you hear God? How can, because in the Old Testament, they understood how to do it with the effort. They understood the people that, that are called to God. There are some people that are called, they are prophets, they are people that can do it for them. You see this other side, these diviners and spiritists, they've always been there. You also those that call up the dead, like, some, um, like um, Saul called up Samuel. These things are abomination to God. So we need to understand how to hear from God, how to operate. And the only way we can do that is by the guidance and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because effort is of no use to us again. Because the Holy Spirit has been released onto the earth. The Holy Spirit has been shared onto every man that believes. At conversion, the Holy Spirit becomes a resident, your resident God on earth. At conversion, the Holy Spirit becomes the resident God on earth for you. And we're going to see the benefits. Acts 12, Acts 2 1. We saw, we witnessed in Acts um, 2 1, we witnessed the coming of the Holy Spirit. The day of Pentecost. At the day of Pentecost. Act 2, go to the next slide. Sorry, the next verse. And suddenly came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. This was the triumphant entry of the Holy Spirit into the world. This is the triumphant entry of the Holy Spirit into the world for the believers. And not just for the believers, for the whole world. Because the Holy Spirit is that thing we call intuition. Something was telling me, even unbelievers say something was telling me. The Holy Spirit is, the, is, is, is here for all, but those that understand him, they benefit from him more. So we cannot make mistake, brothers and sisters, we cannot make mistake, the same kind of mistake King Ahaziah did by going to agents of Beelzebub and to be inquiring about things, to be inquiring about our destiny, to be inquiring about, about our health, our children, to be inquiring, we cannot, we have the Holy Spirit. I always say the Holy Spirit is the most underutilized God ever. 
He is the resident God on earth, yet he is the most util underutilized God ever. Rather, we go, we would like to go to diviners. We would like to go to spiritists because we feel, we feel that the Holy Spirit wastes, wastes our time, we waste our time, or God doesn't come true for us. You can imagine. The Lord said, I'm coming. This is personal, and I'm coming to you, and I'm bringing the years. The Lord said to me, I will, I'm coming, wait for me. It was a particular day. It was a Thursday. Thursday, Friday, he said to me, wait for me. I am coming, and I waited. Rejoicing that it's over. My struggles and everything is over, that today the Lord is coming. My, my life cannot be the same. So I thought, you see, God's ways are not our ways. <laughs> God's way of doing things, they are not our own way. So I waited. The coming of the Lord was explosive. It was, it was, it was wonderful. But little did I know that I was only starting a journey. A journey of repair. A journey that God is reconstructing, repairing me. And every time he gets to a point, he exposes my weakness. He exposes the things that are really inside of me. The Holy Spirit came. I thought he was going to come. Boom, Uchioya, come and become globally known. Come and become the richest black man ever. Come and do this, come and do that. Whatever it is that, that God has in store for me, I was ready to receive. But he came. He doesn't work like that. Have you not heard in, in, uh, in John 15? <laughs> to those that will bear fruit, the father prunes. The father is that great gardener that tender of, uh, of, of uh, guarding, when there is prospect in you, he starts to prune. When there is prospect in you in the kingdom of God, it's not when you begin to receive, it's when you begin to be pruned. That's why the more you go higher in God, the more humble you become. Because the Lord takes you through the crucibles and for you to be able, he takes you through the crucibles for you to be able to Become Christ-like. To become Christ-like. So now we have established the fact that the effort is of no use. We are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. So, so now, how do we know we are in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit? Jesus Christ promised us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a gift, is a divine gift from Jesus. Let's see it in John 14, 26. Jesus promised us the Holy Spirit. It was a promise, and it's not a man that he can lie. Neither is he son of man that he will repent. But when the Father sends the advocate, sorry, um, in, uh, okay, let me, let me use it. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. He will teach you everything he will remind you. So is God's is the carrier of God's wisdom. He will teach you everything. Then he will remind you of everything that I have told you. This is the, the promise. So Jesus knew that we will not be able to survive on our own. Jesus understands our makeup, the, our very makeup, and realizes that man cannot live without a superpower. He cannot live without a divine power. Man, there are some things we cannot push with our spirit, uh, sorry, with our flesh. It's, it's not the design. There are certain levels that you want to attain. You want to attain global global uh, prominence, influence. You cannot attain it without the power. You cannot attain certain things. And the Holy Spirit is that person that gives us that extra edge. You see, we're all ordinary. We were born ordinary. We will die ordinary. But you see, when you hook up with the Holy Spirit, he brings the 
extra to your life and you now become extraordinary. Someone hearing me tonight. You are ordinary. We are all ordinary. So there are some things ordinary men cannot do. There are just some things ordinary men cannot do. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, he now becomes the extra in your team, in your life. And two of you doing it, you now begin to do extraordinary things. That supernatural touch is what the Holy Spirit brings. <laughs> he was, he was, he will teach you everything. And he will bring to remembrance the greatest, when I pray, right now my, my son is doing an exam. My son's in secondary school, they're doing an exam. The first prayer that I pray for them is the prayer, this prayer. May the Holy Spirit grant you the grace of remembrance and recall everything you were taught and everything that you were read. You know what? That is the heritage of their father. And also, that is their heritage. I think one asked me, I said, look, is the, is the work of the Holy Spirit to remind you things that can help you along the way? Is the work of the Holy Spirit to remind you of things that can help you along the way? So I pray for them, for the spirit of recall, for the spirit of remembrance, because this is what John 14, 26 says. Now let us look at the benefits. The benefits of the Holy Spirit. You know, we don't understand the benefits. That's why we are not running. If we know the benefits, I can, I can only say if, if you, if you know the benefits of the Holy Spirit, you will not leave him alone. You will hold on to him. You will struggle with him like, like Jacob struggled with him and his name was changed. Because he's a name changer. He's a game changer. When you hold on to him, he changes everything about you. <laughs> Jacob met the, the uh, um, Jacob wrestled with, this, with, with God and what happened? His name was changed. Peter recognized that Jesus is the son of God. His name was changed from Peter to Simon. Paul had an encounter. His name was changed from Saul to Paul. Something happens to you when you have an encounter with the Spirit of God. When you have an you cannot remain the same. People will just be wondering, it's like, it's like this man is changing. You know? There's something about him. Is that something is the Spirit that has come now to encamp with you. He has come now because, let me say, there's a spirit within and there's a spirit upon. At conversion, all of us receive the spirit within, but not the spirit upon. The spirit upon is for you yielded vessels. The spirit upon that, came up, that comes upon a man is that same spirit that empowers and enables you to do what God has called you to do. So here are some few benefits um, before we start to round up, the benefit, the first one is, is John 16, 13. I've preached it a couple of times, but let me just gloss over it. John 16, 13. This is the first benefit. However, when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide us into all truth. What is the truth concerning why your marriage is shaky right now? What is the truth, sir? Because in all truth, not in some truth, why is it that every time I bid for a contract, I don't get it? What is the truth? Holy Spirit, what is it? Speak to me. I want to know. I want to know this near success syndrome that has happened to my father and now is happening to me. Anytime it's my turn, uh, the things fall, uh, my, my turn, they either close or they say, come back later. It happened to my father, but now it's also happening to me. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Those deep things that you know not of. After all, I say, call upon me, and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. So that is the truth, the deep things of God. 
For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears from the master and whatever he hears from Jesus, this is what he will speak. And you know that Jesus is your, is your intercessor. Jesus is your intercessor interceding for you before his, by the right hand of his father. So whatever he hears, the judgment and verdict of God is whatever he tells you. That this is the truth. Why these things are like this? But you know why I love the Holy Spirit? It's not like those diviners. The Holy Spirit will tell you the problem and give you the solution. That is the truth. Not just tell me the truth of where I'm coming from, but the truth of what can take me to where I am going. I already know where I'm coming from, but I, I want to know what is going to take me to where I'm going to. And lastly, he will tell you of things to come. He will tell you of the future. He will tell you. Holy Spirit, help me. I want to relocate to Canada. I buy my children, I want them to school abroad. He will tell you of the future. He will guide you. I want to get married. I'm single enough. He will guide you, tell you the exact time and nudge you along the way. Another benefit, is benefit of spiritual wisdom. Um, we're still, the first benefit is spiritual wisdom, which I've explained with this. Another um, benefit in terms of spiritual wisdom is 1 Corinthians 2, Verse 10 to 12. Can, we, can I see that? 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10, and we'll take up to 12. But God has revealed them to us. What is them, the truth, to us, through his spirit? For his spirit searcheth all things. Yet, yes, the deep things of God. So he is by revelation. We are moved by revelation we are to live by, by revelation. Everything that proceeds from the mouth of God, everything that comes from the mouth of God, we are to live by, not by bread, not by sight, but everything that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Sorry, go, um, God, reveal, okay, God reveals us. Yeah, 10, just stay here, I'm not done here. God reveals them to us through his spirit, and how does he do that? He downloads it from his spirit because the spirit, God is a spirit. He downloads it to our spirit man so we receive it. But that's where the problem is. We don't know how to receive from God because our spirit man has not been quickened enough for us to be able to hear from him. But we'll come back to that later. For the spirit searched all things, the deep things of God. So the Holy Spirit is our divine search engine. The world, they have Google. Huh? But we have the Holy Spirit as our divine search engine that can search the real truth, not the world truth. That first Corinthians talks as a wisdom of this world of this age is different from spiritual wisdom. Let's go to the next slide. I'm sorry, the next verse. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man? But whoso even so, who knows the things of God except the Spirit of God? The things of God, you can change those things. Who knows the things that pleases God? Who knows the things that pleases God except the Spirit of God? How will you know God? We've already, um, John 16, 13 has already told us that His Spirit, that He will not speak of Himself, but He will speak of that which, which He hears from the Father. Can I have my slide back? He would, he would speak of the things that he hears from the Father. No, go back. I'm not done with that. Just go back to 11. He will speak of things that are not, um, he, will speak of, he will not speak of himself. He will speak of things that come from the Father. So now he knows the things that pleases God. And we all know that when a man's way pleases God, he even causes his enemies to be at peace with him. So no one knows that except the Spirit of God. Now we can go to the next verse. Now we have received not the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit who is from God that we may know the things that have been freely given unto us. What are your gifts? Now we understand that the Holy Spirit is a gift of God to us. It's a gift from Jesus to us. 
But there are things the Holy Spirit, there are gifts, there are things that the Holy, the Holy Spirit brings to us. The things that are freely given unto us by God. We cannot know it by our physical senses. We can only know it by the Spirit. It can only be downloaded by the Spirit. So if you don't, if you don't have, know how to get the Holy Spirit in your life, you will not be able to recognize the gifts. You will not be able to benefit from this gift of the Spirit. No one knows the things of God but him. By the Spirit of God, we know the things that are freely given unto us. Now, we have talked about um, wisdom, divine wisdom. Let's talk about leadership. Let's go another leadership. Proverbs 8, 15 and 16. Start from 15. Proverbs 8, 15. By me kings reign and rulers decree justice. You cannot be an excellent leader. Even being a leader, a father, a mother, you can, by me kings reign and rulers decree justice. Go to, the next, go to the next verse. By me, princes rule, and nobles rule, and the judges of this earth, they judge by me. So the things that we see men say, and we clap for them, is by the spirit of a living God that these things are done. One day the Holy Spirit tells me that men that don't believe in him, he gives words because he knows that their words will benefit, their words will benefit his children. So it doesn't matter. The world will be celebrating somebody that doesn't call God God or says that he's an atheist. Why? Because the, the children of God have not developed themselves enough that the Holy Spirit will use you, put those words. But because those words are needful for that hour, the Holy Spirit will release it. Unto whoever vessel is ready, by me they judge. Okay? I would have loved to stay there, but no time. Let me move on to another benefit of the Holy Spirit. Same Proverbs 8, let's see 18, 19, and 21. Let's see 18. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness for those that follow me. This one doesn't have too much explanation. 19. My fruit is better than gold. Yes, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. Verse 21. That I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth. That I may feel their treasures. Just repeat this one wherever you, wherever you are. That I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth and that I may feel their treasures. This is the, this is the Holy Spirit. The whole of Proverbs from verse 1 to, to 8 is talking about the Holy Spirit. It's talking about the wisdom of God. Why do we know he's talking about the Holy Spirit? Then let's move to another benefit of the Holy Spirit, recreation. This same Proverbs 8.22. To recreate and reorder and change your world. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. Let me see, just go to 23. Let me show you. I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning, from there, before there was even an earth. Let's see, for the fun of it, when there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains ab um, abounding with water. Let's see another one. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. The Lord used the Holy Spirit. He is the carrier of God's wisdom. And he said, God used me for the works of old. If you want to recreate your world, because he's talking about when the world was, was, was uh, without form and void in Genesis 1, that the Lord, it was the Spirit of God that was hovering upon the face of the waters. He was the one that was hovering upon the face of the waters and downloading and, and the, the, what is available and God was creating. The Holy Spirit is the carrier 
of God's wisdom. And you can use him what? If your life is without, is, you feel that your life is without any form of void or darkness is upon the face of the deep for you, if you have that feeling, then the Holy Spirit is the one that will bring light. Then it's the Holy Spirit. You use it to recreate your world. Somebody say, I want to recreate my world. Recreate my world by the Spirit of God. Another one about recreating your world, the benefit in recreating your world is 2 Corinthians 5.17. We all know this. But let us see. 2 Corinthians 2, 5. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This is the point. This is where there's a lot of struggle. If, if, therefore, if anyone be in Christ, you see, Christ could not have been born. Christ could not have been born the way man was born, because when you are born as a man, you acquire sinful nature. So he had to be born by the Spirit. Because Christ came, he was able to be used by the Spirit. He was able to do things because he was not born of man. And God knew, Jesus said, if you are not born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. If you are not born again, he, you cannot even do the things that I do. And I want you to do greater works than me. So because I want you to do greater works than me, are you are going to be born by the Spirit. So now, he, if you be in Christ, you are a new creation, born by the Spirit of God. And once you are born by the Spirit of God, then you are born of incorruptible seed. Now at conversion, the Spirit, remember I said, now at conversion, the Spirit of God comes into us. The Spirit of God is within us. The Spirit of God is around us to make us the children of God. So all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You are now a new creation, born without sinful nature because Christ has dealt with sin in your life. You see, the thing that makes men struggle in their faith is lack of wisdom and understanding of the benefits and the kids, gifts they have. Every time I talk to young men, I try to break it down for them to understand that now they have the power. Now, it's not by the power of man, but by the power of the Spirit. It's the Spirit that quickens you to become that great person. Romans 8 said to us, he, says, um, he said, if, we are, if the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, be in us, that same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will raise our mortal body by that same Spirit. So it is the spirit, this is the spirit, we know that the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit was the spirit that helped Jesus here on earth. We know that it's by the spirit of God he was able to do those things. That's why you cannot do without the Holy Spirit. That's why you cannot do without the Holy Spirit. Because now at conversion you are. So how do, does the spirit upon come? By knowing him. By making out time for him. But before I get to that spirit upon, this is the conclusion of the matter. So that you will realize that you need, my summation is that you need the Holy Spirit in every area of your life, whether you're a housewife, whether you're a husband, whether you're a preacher, you're a business person, you're a soldier, you're a police, policeman, you are a judge. I wish I had time. I would have showed you more of the benefits and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can't do without him. You cannot do without him. You are a new creation. You're already born of the Spirit, but you are not operating. In the power of the Spirit. Because this is where the issue, are, the issue lies. Sorry. This is where, because we don't have idea of how we are going to get all these benefits from the Holy Spirit, we rather visit spiritists. People that call themselves 
um, certain names, all manner of names, but they're all diviners. They're all spiritists. They're all sorcerers. They're all witches with Bible and suits and whatever they wear. By their fruits, you shall know them. And if you hang around them for, for, for a while, you will know. And God says, these things are abomination to me. But people are, people, the people of God, they are lost. They don't know how to receive these things. That's why you're hearing this message. You need to pursue the person of the Holy Spirit. I gave you a story not too long. I said to you, the Lord said to me, he was coming. He's coming. And I waited. I did not know that he's waiting. My, my waiting, he's going to start the, the work of reconstruction. Renewing. He said to me, I will come and I will restore. I will restore all the years that the canker worm, the palma worm, the locust, and the caterpillars eaten. I will restore, I will restore them. But I did not know that another, what he also meant was, before I restore, I will build capacity. I will, I will, I will make you develop capacity to receive it. It's like saying you're asking God for a skyscraper, but your foundation is the foundation of a duplex. How does that work? Most of us, the capacity we have is the capacity to take a duplex. Or, or sorry, even to take a bungalow. But we're asking God for, for a hundred-story building. How does that work? That was the same place I found myself. And the Lord started reconstruction, rebuilding, giving me capacity, making me know him more so that I will be, when he comes, you see now, Crisis. I'm not afraid of crisis as I used to be because I know one that will answer me. Hmm. Preaching becomes easy. Preaching becomes easy because I know. I know how. I just brought out two scriptures. A thought came to me about two people in the Bible. I just wrote it down. I put it in my study. When I wanted to pray, I said, Holy Spirit, I need to preach this. He download. It's not up to five minutes. I said it. He just download. I just sat down for the next one hour writing. I wrote for this one. I wrote for this. He gives. So why would I now go to someone to say, let me put chalk in your tongue so that you become an excellent preacher? How will I do that? But people do it because they don't know how to get to the master. They don't know how to appreciate and walk with the spirit of God. And everything is in the spirit of God. When everything is dying in your hands, it's the time to take him. So when your health issue, you are, you are having a health issue, it is the time to search the truth. What is happening? I asked, I had, I had an ailment at one time. I thought I was going to get an instant healing. The Lord says, start to exercise. The Lord can teach you. I say, Lord, I want to come into great wealth. He did not give me great wealth. He gave me the wisdom for personal finance, which I'm teaching now. So don't think that God is going to answer you the way you want. God will give you principles. And that, was what, that is what happened. And people are not patient. You are not patient with God for him to begin to use and mold you. For me, God is giving me capacity that can take nations. After all, that's what I ask. But it is painful and it does not come. It does not come overnight. It takes time. And that's where I find myself. That God is, the thing now for me now is not that he's not going to do it, but it's just a matter of time when and when will my training be over? So let me round up with this. This is your responsibility, your own responsibility. Time and sacrifice. To be with the Holy Spirit, time, sacrifice. You must make out time for him and you must sacrifice. You must sacrifice something. You must let go of things so that he can come. My journey started I think my time is about up, but let me just, my journey started 
It started when? I just started reading the Bible. That's where it started. The strong hunger to read the Bible. I read uh, uh, KJV, uh, uh, New King James. I go to NIV. I go to just as I started reading, as I started reading, my life started being transformed. One level of transformation. Then I used to use devotional. Another day I explain it. I thought I could explain it today, but I don't have time. I started using devotional. The Holy Spirit stopped me from using devotional. And I proceeded. I had people, I pray with and pray for me. The Holy Spirit stopped it also because he did not want, he wants me to grow. Say, so there's a time people do those things for you, but there's also a time for you to begin to do it for yourself and for other people. If not, when you were a child, you behave like a child. But when you come of age, you behave like an adult. Then that started with prayer. He says, seek me early. So I had to seek him early. I had to seek him early. And in seeking him early, I started moving. I started moving in seeking him early. I started praying. From that point of prayer, he now started coming. You have to show him that willingness. That is the world being yielded, a yielded vessel. When you yield to him, he will come. The more you come, the more he comes. Until he gets to a point he takes over, you have become a yielded vessel. So now for me, I don't pray in the day, in the evening. I don't even pray early morning. I pray all through the night. He taps me and wakes me up. We go. It's a part of conversation. It's a different level of prayer because I was a yielded vessel. And at that point that I have with him, I, I can ask him anything. He's the divine search engine. I will answer me everything. But I have to stop sleep. I thought at my age, if I begin to stop sleep like that, high blood pressure may come. This one may come or that one may come. You cannot be in the presence of the Lord and live with sickness. No, you live with blessing. And they're not wasted. I have to stop sleep. Now I become a man of the night. And let me tell you, the night rules over the day. Men of destiny take their destiny in the night season, not in the daytime. The night rules over the day is what you declare in the night, is what you say in the night, at the, at, in the morning. When the sun comes up, the things you have declared begins to, have, begins to happen. You have authority. You are a God on earth. So you speak in the night, it works. But when you sleep through the night, the declaration of evil men will affect you when you get up. Cicera, the stars fought in their courses against Cicera. Somebody programmed it there that the woman will kill him. What do you program? In the night season, program something so that when it comes, I program things. A man, a difficult man, by the time I went to him, He's no longer difficult because I program things. You also can do that. Another day, another time, I will take out time and talk about the practical steps that one can take to pursue the Holy Spirit. But there are two things, your time and your sacrifice. You must sacrifice something. You must pursue him. You must hold on to him like Jacob. Say, if you don't bless me, I will not. I will not leave you. And I tell you, he will change your name. He will change your story. And a nation will be bettered out of you that will benefit mankind. Amen? All right, so I've come to the end of this, um, our, my, my presentation. Pursue the Holy Spirit and you, your life will never be the same again.